Hey guys, how are you? This is Jim Prusak, I'm a physical therapist here at the Pain PT. And today we're going to discuss uh, a topic I hear a lot from my patients and clients. And this is how do we reconcile acceptance, which I talk a lot about, and strength or sort of pushing back against the pain or standing up to the pain. Okay, so I get people asking me all the time, this is how do you do both those things? They seem like the opposite, or one might be like you're fighting against your pains, and the other one might be saying your pain's okay. Well, here's the thing. There's room for both, and we actually need both to have a successful outcome. So one thing we need to do is we need to learn to stand up to our pain, just like we need to maybe stand up to things in life, set a boundary against our symptoms, set a boundary against people, things, places that are infringing upon ourselves in a way that's not healthy. Okay, so where that comes from is that inner strength, all right? I've talked before in one of my other videos about the emotional scale and how we want to be moving up this scale. And a real big sort of deciding point where you can go either north or you can go down south is fear. A lot of people with chronic pain are stuck in fear and with fear you can go either two ways. Okay, you're, you're pushed into the corner and you're scared. You can either start to fight to get out of there or you're gonna wilt. So if you go down the scale from fear and anxiety, you, it leads you down to that apathy, depression, hopelessness, helplessness, where you have no power, disempowerment, right? Helplessness, powerless. Okay, if you go up this scale from fear and you say, you know what, I'm not going to be controlled by this fear anymore. I'm going to face these fears. I'm going to face these symptoms. You start moving up through the next emotion, which we talked about before, which is anger. Channeled in a positive way. Okay, so this is called constructive anger versus destructive anger. Constructive anger is when you channel the anger against the fear. Now we have research, and I'm going to go into this more in another video. It's absolutely fascinating. We have research now to show that anger is actually better than fear, all right, physiologically, because the stress response shoots down when we get angry. It goes up and then it comes back down. If we're in anxiety and fear and we're staying there, Typically, the physiological stress response, the inflammatory response, stays elevated. Okay, it doesn't actually go down. So we want to use this anger. We want to get mad at the at the fear. Okay, we want to get sort of take our frustration, the part of us that's fed up with this, that's tired of this, okay, that's aggravated by this, and turn it against the fear so we can have some power. Okay, so anger gives us empowerment, motivation, it gives us conviction, it gives us mobility to move up and move forward. Okay, fear as an emotion, as you know, pushes you down, it, it makes you withdraw. It's the flight response. Okay, you avoid, that's called fear avoidance. So we don't want that. So we've got to actually use anger in a constructive way to say, look, I am going to stand up to these symptoms. I am going to also say no to these symptoms. All right. Meaning I'm not going to necessarily um, allow them in the sense that they're going to take over my life. They're not going to control me anymore. I have the power. I'm empowered. So when we take anger and we shoot up the scale, we go through courage. We go through determination. It leads to empowerment. Empowerment is literally at the top of this emotional scale and sort of helplessness or no power at all, feeling absolutely helpless is at the bottom. So we want to move up. Okay, so acceptance is also right up there near the top. So what we, what we do is you need to hold the strength, this inner mental strength from the cortex that Number one, I am fine. I am okay. I am not going to be pushed around by these symptoms. I'm not going to be controlled by these symptoms anymore. I don't want to go down and become helpless, become a victim. I want to get stronger. Okay? 
So it's sort of like you're holding the line and you're standing up to your symptoms. You're talking to your brain. You're saying to it, look, I am fine. There's nothing wrong here. You can tell it to back off. You can tell it from a, of a position of strength and I'm not going to budge. So if your issue involves you sitting or let's say standing is a problem, then you want to engage those activities from a position of strength that you're not going to be moved from those activities or things that you avoid anymore. And you're going to go through the symptoms. Now this leads to the next thing. From a position of strength that you need the hold that comes from your inner frustration, that gives you the strength in a positive, constructive way. We're going to hold that strength with acceptance. So what I mean by this is the other part of your brain, the limbic brain, it's not rational, logical. Okay, so it may be spitting out symptoms, it may be spitting out uncomfortable emotions. All right, we need to have the strength to stand up and handle those feelings when they happen, to handle those symptoms when we're, let's say, sitting, and it's uncomfortable, or standing, or walking, or eating a certain food, or doing any activity that we typically avoided. We need the strength to handle what's happening. And so we need to accept what's happening because it is from that different part of your brain, but from a different position. We're not scared of it anymore. We're not withdrawing and avoiding the activities, which just strengthens that response. We're weakening it by getting strong from a place of acceptance of the symptoms or emotions. Abs anything you can feel. So let's call it a feeling in your body. Anything you can feel in your body, I want you to accept it from a place of strength, from a place of empowerment, from drawing a line, standing up, you're not going to be budged or moved. And I tell people this is like, like a hurricane, or depending where you live in the world, a cyclone or a typhoon. All right, you might be able to tolerate and handle and stand up to a category one or maybe category two hurricane winds. Okay, these are your symptoms, storms coming through you. Now, as soon as that storm gets really stronger, like a category three, four, or even five, you're blown away. You're not able to hold yourself against that, to hold strong against the blasting symptoms, the blasting emotions. But we need to, we need to build the strength to stand up to anything. And this plays into Dr. Sarno when he talks about people-pleasing, goodism, giving up ourselves, saying yes when we mean no, not expressing our feelings, not setting a healthy boundary. Okay, we need to do this in all aspects of our lives to be healthy. It also involves us standing up to the pain or symptoms. While we accept what's there, because it's a different part of your brain again, it's going to discharge it. You don't want to budge. Okay, I've seen it in a lot of clients where I've worked through different positions or things where what happens initially is you get a wave of emotion, a wave of feeling or symptoms. And sometimes that wave is really big. It's going to come right over you and it's going to crash and you feel like you're going to drown. But what I want you to do is to stay with it. Stay strong. Accept what's there from a place of sort of calm inner strength. It's not that we're ranting and raving. We're just strong, but we're firm, but we're also gentle at the same time. Okay, so it's like literally holding a wall inside yourself against this, but from a calm, determined place. It's like an athlete in the game. You can have a look in their eye where they're, they're just like determined. Michael Jordan is an example coming from a lot of determination, channeling anger in a positive, constructive way to his game, became the greatest of all time. But also playing within himself, playing calm, playing settled, not being overly angry right, or frustrated because that's going to deter him from playing well. It's the same thing for us. We want to hold this very firm, calm wall or boundary to the pain to the symptoms, and we're gonna stand up to it. 
And so it's going to be looking you in the eye right now, just like I'm looking at you. Who's going to blink first? Who's going to back down first? If you hold your ground and you accept what it's giving to you, I can guarantee you, almost guarantee you, I can't always guarantee you, but almost guarantee you it's going to back down. It's like a mirage. It's like a ghost eventually. It just goes away because there's nothing to fear. If we know for sure that you have TMS, mind-body syndrome, we know there's nothing pathological, there's nothing wrong with you from the physical level, then you don't need to be scared of these things. We don't want to run away. We want to stand up to them. Okay, that's, a, that's strengthening the prefrontal cortex, again, which we know is weak in chronic pain. We want to strengthen that cortex to get stronger. At the same time, we've got to deal with this limbic emotional brain that's very irrational, very emotional, and it's going to give us a whole bunch of feelings in the body. we got to handle that from a position of strength. So that's what I want you guys to do, okay? So you combine strength and acceptance, okay? Combine empowerment with acceptance and embracing what is, okay? That's how we reconcile these two things beautifully together into one approach. All right, everybody, reach out if you got questions on this. This is hopefully going to help you tie together uh, things I people question to me all about in terms of trying to understand this. All right, take care now. Bye-bye.